Hi all, welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and our video user guide for APT. With this time we are going to be looking at the gear tab. And the gear tab is exactly what it names its name says. It's the gear you have connected to your setup that you might be using. It's divided into six sections and we'll cover them each individually. Uh, but just quickly we'll go into it and uh, just one little thing, gear tab like the camera tab and the image tab, shift clicking on the tab uh, creates a floating window that you can move around, resize or whatever uh, for what you need. If you feel like you need a permanent um, view of your gear that you've got going. But uh, that's that one there, you can either click the cross up here or shift click on the tab again and it uh, gets rid of the floating window. But as I said, it's six different sections. I'll be covering it individually as we go along. So let's get started and we will start with the scope section. So the telescope tab, part of the tab could probably rightly be called the uh, mount part uh, because it, it's what controls your mount and what your mount's up to. So just quickly we'll go into it here. Okay, uh, starting at the top is your scope connect and disconnect button um, I think I've covered that elsewhere but uh, basically you can disconnect your scope um, connect it it will connect automatically uh, if you want to um, connect a different mount simply disconnect hold down shift connect select your camera from your sorry um, telescope from the list here and we use for this one I'm using the simulator for dot net uh, click OK and it will connect that automatically for you um, APT of course remembers what scope what uh, mount you have connected and we'll come back to that every time uh, now your settings button here most mounts don't like you playing with your settings while you're connected and truthfully you are much better off setting any settings for your mount in the driver prior to connecting the mount um, you will actually get a warning that they don't like it so um, I suggest not using that do any settings you want for your mount through the actual driver you're much better off okay now you have your RA and deck and alt as settings so that's where your mount is currently pointing um, I'm currently parked at the uh, home position which is pointing at the south celestial pole or thereabouts um, Next to that you have your button which you can t change from J now to J2000. Um, as you see it's con conversion, it will convert uh, the settings for your object's location virtual, uh, via J2, J now rather than J2000. Um, you can have it on either, I prefer using J2000, so I'm going to turn that off. Um, but you need to make sure that anything you're using, your mount, uh, if you're using a planetarium as well, make sure they're all set to the same, whether it's J2000 or J now, uh, do what you need to do. Um, eventually it'll change to J2050, will be the next one coming along rather than J2000. Now, next you have your actual mount control. Um, this is uh, for controlling where your mount's pointing of course it's just like a hand controller uh, you have two different speeds which you can set in the mount settings in uh, APT's main settings um, that control whether you're going at arc seconds or arc minutes for each move so the speed of them but you can change these speeds in your APT settings if you like um, default is one arc minute per second or one arc second per second so it depends on what you want to do for your speed for using these uh, north south east west just like a normal hand controller uh, down in the corner you have ringy thingy which you can change settings uh, as i've shown before change numbers uh, then you have a destination you may want to go to um, is listed in here you can either enter it manually uh, there's a number of ways you can get it you can uh, use go to um, now with this if you click on go to shift click uh, it opens up the advanced go to where you can set an alt as location uh, an alt as offset in arc minutes from where you're pointing uh, ra deck offset as well or you can go to the equator east or west 
of the meridian um, and you can offset your declination for that as well uh, this is handy for things like calibrating your guiding and things like that it'll just take you I think it's 25 degrees um, off your from the meridian so you can do calibrations and things like that uh, if you need to it's just a simple way to get there and when you picked what you want to do just hit the go to and off it'll go so that's what that does if you hit shift click on go to um, normal go to when you have figures entered in here it will go to the location listed there then you have point craft uh, that's covered in a separate video of its own so I'm not going to go into that uh, I'll link that in the description probably if I remember um, then you have your object browser uh, just clicking on it loads your object browser and when you select an item from in here uh, the go to will be filled in up here for the declination and, and everything else the RA and deck for the object you've selected um, you can always shift click on objects and what that happens if you have a uh, something selected in your planetarium here I've got Centaurus A which is still above the horizon in the middle of the day here of course so um, why is it on that scope I don't know mucking around with my scope there we go um, so it, if you have something selected in here sorry about that um, go to APT and you hold down shift and click on objects it will fill those details as you see 13 25 43 if I go into uh, Stellarium and I look at my RA and deck uh, 13 and 43 so they're exactly the same figures there so if you do it that way then you can hit go to and it will go to the object you have selected in your um, planetarium now then we have your park sink and track now park is used to park and unpark um, if you hold down shift okay so I'll unpark that for now um, if you hold down shift and click on park it'll ask you do you want to set the current position as the park position now this is handy if you need to park your mount away from the home position you might have a small observatory where you need to have your mount away from the home position so you can close the roof or something so you can use this setting and that's where APT will park it to so that's what it can do there uh, while it's unparked if you hit park it'll tell you you can't use APT until it's parked so I didn't move it so it's still parked sync that'll sync the uh, coordinates of the, the mount up here with your uh, mount so they sync getting synced there um, it's similar to how point craft works where it will sync it as well and then you can turn your tracking on and off here if you need to and that's it for the scope section uh, next we'll move on to the auto star section now the auto star section is only relative if you have a mead mount that is using an auto star controller um, I can't really show you much here because I don't have one as simple as that but uh, just quickly to go over it basically it mimics the hand controller for your auto star and that's all it does there basically everything's the same and works the same way now if you have a mead focuser connected through the auto star it will also have a position for moving your focus motor as well underneath it um, as i said i don't have one so i can't show you any more than what you can see here but that's basically how that works if you have an auto star be sure to read the actual user guide um, because i can't do anything with it now just one thing you can hide sections you don't need in a in the uh, gear tab by simply hitting these little boxes on the side so because I don't use an auto star I can hide it and I don't need to look at it and that's it for the auto star section nice short and quick okay so in time to move on so the dithering and guiding section of the gear tab is something you will want to have a look at even if you don't want to dither or guide um, you just need to change a couple of sec sections to uh, make it so it doesn't pop up strange windows here and there and annoy you it won't hurt anything but it stops some pop-ups you might get um, for example if you're not using guiding and you don't go in and change these settings it's automatically set to connect to uh, a to PhD 2 and uh, if you start a plan with it set up like that it will pop up warning you you're not connected and blah 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 do you want to continue so 
the first thing you might want to do is go into the settings here and uh, if you're not going to be using guiding change it to APT dithering uh, then you can turn the dithering on or off if you don't want to use it um, that's up to you um, all these other settings are covered in another video um, if you're not using guiding you don't want to control guiding so you might want to turn that off and the other thing they have is uh, auto start PhD 2 which is a good thing it auto connects the equipment and everything else but uh, as I'm using the simulator a lot for these programs I want to start APT on my own uh, PhD 2 on my own simply because I can change to my real gear when I need it um, but once these videos are done I'll generally leave that on auto start but all these other settings I'll go through in another video so if you don't want to use guiding be sure to turn off auto start uh, to change to APT dithering and to turn up to control guiding that way it won't try and connect and won't pop up messages that you haven't got your guiding connected etc so that's just something you need to do whether you're using guiding or not so that's that one there um, then for your guiding you, you've got controls to start and stop your guiding if you need to manually um, as long as you have control guiding uh, selected in your settings uh, APT can turn off guiding uh, when you're moving and things like that so that's up to you whether you need to start or stop it manually you may want to um, then you have your RA and deck um, distances these are just basically copies of what you get in your guiding program um, APT takes it over the last hundred steps um, if you have a bigger graph in your guiding program I did mine over 400 uh, it will be different figures simply because this is taking a smaller uh, section of the graph and the graph is just a repeat of what's on your guiding program anyway now when you have your settings buttons I'm going to turn on tooltips for this um, it displays what you've got selected um, see this little D here that means I've got dithering enabled but if you don't uh, you'll see it um, if there's no dithering done and no auto cancelled it's disabled uh, the D means your dithering is enabled oops lost it uh, the C means auto dithering is disabled and auto cancel is enabled and D plus C means they're both enabled um, now if you're having problems with the connection to your guiding program uh, holding down shift and clicking on it uh, re-enables that connection so that's just something if you've disconnected for some reason or other um, that can do there but all of this because this is such a complex one especially when you come to multi cameras uh, which can be done um, I'll go through all this in a separate video later on and once I do that I might remember to link it into the description here but uh, everything in here will be covered in a greater detail in that video but that's your guiding and dithering section um, so we'll move on to the next section now now on to the focuser section of the gear tab and it's pretty basic this one pretty easy um, I'll switch over to it here now the focuser is your connect and disconnect focuser uh, it works the same as any other disconnect and connect for your things uh, holding down shift when you want to connect will let you select a new focuser etc etc now on the top line here you have numbers one and two um, this is so you can have two different focuses set you might have one on your guide camera and you might have one on your imaging camera so you might want them both to be uh, able to be focused in here uh, so you can have actually two focuses connected at once um, next to that is your settings button um, which just basically takes you into your focus of settings and you can do your settings in there so that's pretty simple there um, the position is your current position of your focuser uh, then you have your go to position which you can put in a figure there and go to will go to that position when you click on the button now if you hold enter a figure in here and hold down shift it sets the figure you've got in here to the current position so you can actually change what it is so if your focus is a bit out of whack say your zeros off somewhere um, so you've racked your focus all the way in and you may want to change the location to say zero rather than wherever it is so you can do that by holding down entering it in here in the box and then just hitting shift go to plus plus I'll go to and that'll change that position 
Now, APT lets you store uh, three predefined positions here. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, holding down shift and clicking on the number uh, will store the current position in a posi in, in it. Um, so at the moment I have 41,000 done um, as at my position one. I've been playing around with it. Uh, position two has nothing and position three has nothing. So if I move this, I can set 25,000. If I want to do that, I should hit shift one and it will save 25,000 in that position. Uh, another thing you can do is if you enter a figure in here, say I enter 35,000. Um, if I hold down control and click on a position, it will store the position from your go-to box as that position. So now I have 25,000 on one and 35,000 on two. So that's the way you can do that there. Now then you have your step sizes. Uh, this is how big a step they'll take when you use your buttons here on the bottom to go in and out. Um, the first button is a single step of that size. The other one is, I think it's five times that size. Oops, I better check that. My brain's not working. Ah, uh, here, five times. So that uses five times the size. So with it set to 100, that'd move it 500 in either direction or 100. And now you can also set up to do different step sizes in profiles. Uh, you can create a profile which uh, changes the step size depending on what you want. Um, you may want a really coarse one for moving quickly and a fine one for doing little steps or whatever. But you can set them up and save them in there as many as you need. So here's one here. It says 30 where it step sizes is 30. Click OK and it simply changes to that. So you can set up as many profiles as you like. Now the thing is, like I've said, you've got your coarse and, and fine steps. And as I said, the fine steps is one of your step size here. And the coarse one is five times that figure. And of course, a stop button while it's moving. And that's it. That's how the focuser section works. Uh, time to move on to our filter wheel, I think. So now on to the filter wheel section of the gear tab. Uh, pretty straightforward. If you're not using filters of any type, it's something you don't have to worry about. But if you're using a filter, it doesn't matter what type it is. Um, you really need to uh, have the filter wheel set up uh, to work with it, whether it's a manual filter wheel, a filter drawer, or even just a filter connected to the front of your camera. Um, to get it to work properly, you need to go into your APT settings and set it up for a manual there but even as a manual one you need to connect the wheel uh, so APT knows that there's a filter there and can use it for uh, things like putting the correct filter in your fits headers or in your file naming if you use it there so it can do that uh, but you need to make sure it's listed as connected and basically you have your connect and disconnect button which is the same works the same as all the other ones um, connects and disconnects you can get into your settings for your filter wheel um, this is just a simulated one and this is how it goes um, uh, don't want it always on top so okay for that one um, then you have your uh, tells you what position your filter wheel is currently in um, you can go to from your list you can select a filters um, from what which one you want to go to so it'll go to that filter automatically so I click that it'll move to the O3 um, and it will adjust the focuser if you have that enabled I'll get to that in a second so go to L um, then you've got you can either select from the list like that or if you click forward or back here it will go to the filter next in line so I can go that and it goes to my HA etc etc so that's how they go there uh, the offset is if you've done filter offsets in your APT settings for your filter wheel, um, it will tell you what the offset is from whatever your default is. So offset a 10 from my L filter on the simulator. It doesn't really make much difference in the simulator, of course. And then you have your adjust focuser. Um, with the little star next to it here, it's on. You turn it off, it won't adjust your focus of position for your various um, but with it on if you change filters and have offsets it will change the offset for those particular filters 
and that's what you've got there and really that's all there is to the filter section um, just remember that if you are using a manual wheel a filter drawer or just a filter on your camera to get everything to work properly you need to set it up in your APT settings which I'll cover later and make sure you've got it connected despite the fact there's nothing to really connect it just lets APT know you are actually using it and that's it for the filter wheel section so the final section of the gear tab is the rotator um, I don't actually have one so I can't really do too much but I do have the simulated one so I can always use that now the uh, rotator doesn't auto connect you have to connect it yourself so just click connect and because I've done one before it'll just automatically connect to it uh, if you need to hold down shift connect and you can choose it from it uh, rotator simulator net is what I'll be doing it says you need to look at the properties um, I'm not going to worry too much about that okay um, okay so now I'm connected to one uh, the settings are basically just what you just saw there it goes back into your settings there's nothing much to do there um, then you have your actual position what your rotator is in um, a go-to position if you want to move it in degrees um, clicking on that and say I go to rotate it 10 go to and it'll move 10 degrees um, if you hold down if you have that say at 25 um, I'm just trying to remember off my head what this does because I don't have one I don't use it shift click there yeah. so shift clicking synchronizes the position to whatever you've got entered in here so it's like on your focus or whatever um, where you you can synchronize the position to change the position so instead of 10 degrees if I hold down shift and go to it will change the position to 25 degrees and then of course you have your move buttons uh, your short ones are 1.7 uh, yeah, 1 degree at a time I don't know <laughs> Oh, the other ones are a lot further so 10 and it goes up to 20 so 10 degrees at a time for the big ones so that's basically it for it um, you just set where you want to go to and that'll move your rotator if you have one um, as I don't have one I'm going to disconnect it now and it's another section I hide simply by clicking at the top but you can do that with all these you can hide what you don't want to see um, so generally gives you a bit more space oh I've got guiding going I'm parked but it's guiding imagine that <laughs> oh, stop guiding that's what you get when you run around with things um, but that's it for uh, the tilt the gear tab uh, everything's covered there it's nice and simple and I'll leave that here for now I hope you'll join me in another video soon clear skies everyone and talk to you later